Hi and welcome, my name is Sarah and today I want to go through some of the basics of the straight line work in Core 1. I'm going to do a few things today in this video, just covering the skills. I'm going to go through finding the distance between two points, finding gradients and finding equations of lines and perpendicular bisectors. Skip to any bits that you want to go to and please do pause the video at any point to have a go on your own and come back and compare. Okay, I've started by putting two points on the board A and B, and the first thing I want to do is find the distance between them. Now to do that, you can use the equation If you know that equation, that's brilliant. If you don't, you might want to learn it off by heart. If it's a bit complicated or you're struggling to remember it, you don't actually need to know it. As long as you can use Pythagoras, you'll be fine. I'll show you what I mean. Because I've drawn out the points, you can then label them x1, y1, x2, y2. So this here, x2 minus x1, that's the difference between the x values. So that's like this side of the triangle. And the difference between the y values will be here. So working out the difference between minus 4 and minus 2, that's 2 along there. And between 9 and 5 is 4. So as I said, it is just Pythagoras' this equation. So you'll be doing 2 squared plus 4 squared and then square rooting the results. If you want to just directly put the numbers into this one, that's fine too. You should get the same. Have a go if you like. So we'll get square root of 4 plus 16, which is root 20. If you want to simplify that third, that's brilliant. Root 4 times root 5. So that's 2 root 5. That's the distance AB. Another thing I want to do is find the gradient between AB. The gradient is given by this formula here. Again, this formula you need to learn off by heart if you don't know it. Um, and Again, this is using difference between y values and difference between x values. So it's the difference in the y's divided by the difference in the x's. We've already got the difference in the y's, that's 4, and the difference in the x's is 2. So it will be 4 divided by 2, which is 2. The only thing is, if you don't use this formula and you just look at it like that, you will need to remember that a slope going that way is negative, so the gradient's actually negative 2, not positive 2. I'll directly substitute in the numbers just so you can see how that takes care of that negative value. So y2 take away y1, that will be 5 take away 9 over minus 2 take away minus 4, which is minus 4 over 2, which is, yes, minus 2. So if you do just substitute those numbers into this formula, that's probably the way that will give you the least mistakes because the majority of mistakes in core 1 are from minus signs. Okay, the next thing I want to do now we've got the gradient is to find the equation of the line running through the points A and B. To find the equation of a straight line you can use y equals mx plus c. And to find the equation of a straight line you need two things. You need the gradient and you need a point that it goes through. We have just worked out the gradient, so that's brilliant. And we've got two points that it goes through, so we're ready to go. We only need one point it goes through, x and y. Let's just pick this one. We can use that one later to check that it's right. They should give you the same. So let's use this one here. y is 9. m is minus 2, as we worked out. x is minus 4, and we don't know c yet, but we can work it out. Minus 2 times minus 4 is 8, so c must be 1. Putting those together, we'll have y equals mx plus c, so that's minus 2x plus 1. 
I mentioned using this point here to check, which is a lovely way that you know you've got your marks. So let's do that just now. Y here is 5. X here is minus 2. Let's check that works. Minus 2 times minus 2 is 4 plus 1, and that does give you 5. So you know it's right. Okay, the last thing I want to do is slightly more complicated, but we'll be okay. And that is to find the equation of the perpendicular bisector between A and B. Now perpendicular, you might already know, means that if you take this gradient here, which we worked out was minus 2, perpendicular is at 90 degrees to that. Probably not a very good drawing, but that should be at 90 degrees. So the perpendicular bisector will be running that way, and it's called bisector because it, it cuts this line in half. Anything with the word bi in it is cutting it into two pieces. So that's the perpendicular bisector. Now I mentioned to find the equation of a straight line you need two things, the gradient and a point that it goes through. Let's look at the gradient first. We know this gradient here is minus 2. Now, if you times that by the perpendicular gradient, you'll always get minus 1. Perpendicular gradients times to give minus 1. Now, you might be able to work out what this gradient is just by looking at it. If not, a quick way of doing it is to flip it round to get the reciprocal. So 2 will go on the bottom and reverse the sign. So instead of it being negative, it will be positive. Minus 2 times a half gives you minus 1. So our new gradient is a half. Now we also need a point that it goes through, and that point will be the midpoint of AB. The perpendicular bisector goes exactly halfway through. So we need the midpoint. I find it easiest, as with everything in straight line work, to split it into the x's and the y's separately. Let's look at the x values. We've got minus 4 and minus 2. Halfway in between those must be minus 3. Look at the, the y values next, 9 and 5. Halfway between those will be 7. So that point there is minus 3, 7. If you're struggling with that, then a good tip is to add the two numbers and divide by 2. I'll just show you what I mean. Add these two numbers gives you minus 6, divide by 2 gives you minus 3. Add these two numbers gives you 14, divide by 2 gives you 7. Okay, we've got the gradient and we've got a point that it goes through, so we're in a good position to get the equation of that straight line. Again, using y equals mx plus c. y is 7 now, m is a half, x is minus 3, and we don't know c. Half times minus 3 is minus 3 over 2. 7 is 14 over 2. So c is going to be 17 over 2. So now I've got y equals a half x plus 17 over 2. Now it looks a little bit messy because it's got fractions in it, so why don't we times everything by 2 to get rid of that denominator. So we'll have 2y equals, that will just be x now, plus 17. Thank you for watching. Please go and do some practice of all of these skills that I've gone through today. Um, I'll put some links on the bottom, otherwise use your textbook. Have fun!